Hi, thanks for watching Yogi Moksha with Vanessa and Andrew. If you enjoy our sequences, please consider subscribing and providing feedback. We enjoy hearing from those that share our passion for yoga. In our functional energetic sequence, we started to explore energetic movement through the body's subtle energy channels. We started to understand that this movement and harmonization of energy is important for overall health. In traditional Chinese medicine, it is qi that moves through 12 main meridians. In Indian philosophy, it is prana moving through nadis. In more recent research, the focus has been on myofascial meridians that loosely follow many of the Chinese medicine meridians. Myofascial meridians are bands that allow chemical and electrical energy to move through the body. These bands are part of the single connective tissue network that is present in every part of our body. It is these myofascial meridians that we work with in our practice and that we will work with in this sequence. Often, these meridians are worked in their yin-yang pairs and this is how we will work with the meridians in this sequence. The sequence we will practice seeks to restore some balance, helping to ensure a healthy flow of qi throughout the body. By increasing our store of qi, increasing our perception of energy in the body, and hence our ability to follow and ultimately move that energy, and ensuring the energy channels, meridians, are free of blockages. So enjoy the practice. Namaste. In traditional Chinese medicine, the kidney and urinary bladder meridians relate to the respiration and water flow within the body, and also the store of jing, our essence. The kidney meridian's primary pathway starts at the base of the foot, coming up to the inner ankle, up the inside of the leg to the groin, and then straight up the middle front of the torso, ending at the clavicle. The urinary bladder meridian starts at the outer corner of the little toe, moves along the outside of the foot to the outer ankle, up the back of the leg, up through the buttocks, all the way up the side of the spine to the neck, over the top of the head, finishing in the corner of the eye, again on both sides. Disharmony in the kidney and urinary bladder meridians can manifest as gynecological issues, headaches, backaches, urinary problems, and emotionally as a lack of trust in others and ourselves, holding on to things and people and unable to let go. Please enjoy the practice. So bringing ourselves to a comfortable seated position, either just cross-legged on the mat or maybe sat up on a block like I am. Straighten the back, nice straight spine. If we're comfortable, bringing the eyes to a close. Just starting with a couple of minutes of focus on the breath, just to bring us to a single point, ready for our 90 minute sequence. Just a natural pattern of breathing, allowing the breath to come and go. Even the movement of the air on the tip of the nostrils. Cooler air coming in. And warmer air leaving as we exhale through the nose. Always breathing in and out through the nose in our practice. Feeling the belly rise and fall maybe as we inhale and exhale. 
starting to draw our senses inwards, remaining aware of the noises around us, but turning our attention to our inner self. Refocusing those senses inwards. Starting to retune those senses. Ready for our meridian based practice. Tuning into more subtle sensations than purely physical. Just a couple more breaths now. In your own time, just gently blinking open the eyes, getting ready for our first posture. We're going to start with a toe stretch. So coming to sitting on the toes, just tucking the toes underneath, sitting back on the heels of the feet, and then just finding the position, starting to find the physical position that works for you. If you're uncomfortable sitting up, if that's too much on the toes, then we can take a bit of weight in the hands. Coming forward a little bit like this. So just starting to find that physical edge. So the meridian we're working with is the kidney meridian. So coming up the inside of the legs. So we might want to just open the legs a little bit. Just bring that focus back into the inside of the legs. So wherever we're finding ourselves, just settling into the position, the posture physically. Relaxing the muscles in the feet and maybe up the front of the legs. As we relax, beginning to find some stillness. Mental, physical stillness. Allows us to take our attention down to the underside of the little toe. Drawing the line of that energy across the sole of the foot to the inner ankle, straight up the back of the inside of the legs, the groin, straight up the middle of the torso, and then parting to each clavicle. We exhale, coming back down, clavicle, middle of the torso, straight down to the groin, down the inside of the legs inner ankle, across the sole of the feet, just ending underneath the little toe. So just continuing with that a couple of times in your own time, your own rhythm. Maybe you want to coordinate the rise and the fall of the energy with the breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Maybe you just prefer to focus on drawing those lines or in fact drawing that energy up and down to some other rhythm. Again, not being too concerned if we think we can't feel anything at certain parts along this meridian line or band. Over time, our perception of that improves. Just thinking through and visualizing the movement of that energy is ensuring we're getting all the benefits of flushing out that meridian band. Each time we practice, we Create and store more chi. Just 
just untucking the toes. Stay in this same position. Maybe bring the knees together a little bit. We're just going to walk those hands forward. So our target area in this posture is the back, the thoracolumbar, so I'm all up the back. The meridian we're going to be targeting is the urinary bladder. So coming up the outside of the legs, straight up both sides of the spine, back of the neck, over the top of the head, finishing just in the corner of the eyes. So when you're ready, just walking those arms forward. We don't have to have the arms extended because we're not working with the arms at the moment. Now again here, just want to find your physical edge. We're going to feel this physically in the all the way up the back, probably in the glutes as well. So just relax those muscles, glutes, maybe some of the leg muscles, back. Finding that edge, relax the muscle, just relax the muscle. Maybe things open up a little bit. And then we start to find stillness. Physical stillness allows us to develop a mental stillness. And once we have that, we can start to tune into the more subtle, the subtle sensations of the meridians, the energetics. So taking our attention down to the outside of the little toe on both feet as we inhale, drawing up along the outside edge of the foot to the outer ankle, coming up the back of the legs, back of the leg up through the glute, all the way up both sides of the spine, coming up to the neck, top of the head, over the forehead, Finishing in the corner of the eyes. Exhale all the way back down, forehead, back of the head, neck, straight down both sides of the spine, through the glutes, down the back of the legs, back of the legs, down the outside of the feet, ending at the little toes. Just continue with that a few more times in your own rhythm. Inhaling, drawing up. Right up into the corner of the eyes and exhale. Moving that energy or just allowing it to fall all the way back down through the back. Back of the legs to the toes. Just allowing the head to fall to the mat if you want. Inhaling, drawing up. Exhale, moving the energy back down. Starting to develop a rhythm now for the whole practice. More important to have a nice steady rhythm in terms of the energetic movement or observation. You want to feel that sensation as it moves all the way up the meridian. Rather than trying to complete more and more movements, it's just more about the sensation as we move up and back down. Just a breath or two more here. Yes, 
inhale. Walking hands back to the feet. And coming ready for our first rebound. So come to lying on your back. I'd suggest lying flat out on your back rather than supporting yourself. I'll just support myself like this so it's easier to talk. Arms and legs relaxed and I'll rebound. Bringing the eyes to a close if we're comfortable. As we do so, taking our attention to the areas that we've just been working. So the inside of the legs, the back of the legs, the back. And just opening our mind to sensations either arising there or moving through. Starting to try and identify what those sensations might be. And where they might be moving to. All we're doing in our rebound is just observing. Observing and maybe comparing to how the sensation feels versus being in the posture. Next inhale, just bring ourselves to a seated posture. So our next for our next posture, our physical target area is going to be the groin. We're going to do that with a, a butterfly, but we're going to recline. So bring the soles of the feet together. I'm going to experiment a little bit. I'd probably just go sort of midway, not too far out from the body, not too far in. Start midway, but in the posture, maybe experiment a little bit. Maybe draw the feet up or move them down a bit. And from here, we're going to just come back. Maybe you can support yourself on your elbows if you want, or even use a bolster, or just lie straight back. Again, maybe experimenting with the position of those feet just to make sure that we're comfortable in the hips and the knees. Some people do find that they like to support themselves under their knees if they have any knee issues, so that's always an option as well, using a block or a bolster. We're going to be here for a good five or six minutes, so we want to make sure that you're in a position where you can just relax. You want to be holding the knees in the position. So just starting to find our edge, that first point of physical resistance there. Just allowing the hips to open up. Relaxing. Start to relax. I find that the hips open up a bit more, maybe the knees come a bit closer to the mat. If we want to, we can even take our arms above our head here. So the meridian we're targeting in this posture is the, the kidney meridian coming up the inside of the legs. Find our stillness. We're going to take our attention down to under the little toe. As we inhale, we're going to draw up across the sole of the foot to the inner ankle, 
all the way up the inside back of the leg, up through the middle of the torso, up the carnate, clavicle on both sides. You might find that having the arms above the head helpful in terms of opening up that part of the rib head and the torso. Exhale, coming back down, torso straight down to the inside of the legs, back down to the ankle, across the sole of the feet, the little toe, underside of the leg. Inhaling, drawing up. And exhale, moving that energy back down into the torso and the side legs. Just continuing with that movement of observation in your own time. As with a lot of these postures, we're finding stillness, but we want to explore a little bit with perhaps changing the position of the head, moving it from one side to the other. Just explore, see what that does to the sensation. One of the great things about a yin practice, whether it's meridian based or not, is that we have the time to explore the effect of small or subtle changes in our posture. Each time we draw the energy up through the body. Improving our perception of what that energy is and where it is. Allowing us over time to not only observe but actually move that energy around the body through the meridian network. Allowing us to respond to any messages that our body is sending us about where that chi or prana might be required. Drawing up, so all the feet and inside the legs straight up the middle of the torso, up to the clavicle. Exhale back down the middle of the torso, down to the groin, the inside of the legs, the sole of the feet to the little toe. When you're ready on the next inhale, just releasing, staying lying down for a rebound. So again, fully extended on the mat, eyes closed, arms and legs relax. No attention to the area we've just been working, so taking our attention down to the inside of the legs, the middle of the torso. And just observing any sensations.
trying to define in your own words what they might be. Whether they're using the meridian pathway that we just worked with. Maybe you feel the soles of the feet or the inside of the legs. Maybe even the middle of the torso. Maybe all of those. Maybe it's moving, maybe it's static. And the next inhale, coming up to a seated position. So for our next posture, physically the target area will be the hamstrings and back of the legs and the thraso lumbar, so the back. And in terms of the meridian we're targeting, we're going to be targeting the urinary bladder meridian, so outside, outside and cool. Back of the legs, up through the glutes, straight up through the back, over the head. We can do that by simply folding forward. Legs don't have to be together, they can be a comfortable distance apart. We're going to fold forward. And some people like to support the head with a block here. Maybe initially as they're getting settled. Others may just be comfortable just to allow the head to hang, so whatever suits you today. You could even use, some people use a bolster across the, the thighs. Wherever you are, just leaning forward, we're not pulling, so it's not a yang practice, we're not trying to pull ourselves down, just allow the body to fold forward. Because we're working here with the urinary bladder meridian, and it's you know, almost full body, toes right up the back of the legs, back to the head. We're going to want a fairly even distribution of stress in the back of the body. So it's a good mix between, we want a slightly rounded back. We have a very straight back, then most of it's in the back of the legs. We have a very rounded back, then we get most of it in the, in the back. So... You know, it would be nice to distribute it evenly. So just naturally allow the back to bend a little bit. And just see how that's distributing the stress. Just settling in there, finding that physical edge, hamstrings, thraso lumbar, maybe even up in the neck. Once we've found that edge, relaxing the muscles, maybe during this posture, the Body opens up and the head or the chest starts moving towards the mat, that's fine. Then we find stillness. Using that stillness, body and mind, we take our attention to the outside of the little toes. As we inhale, maybe we draw a line up to the outer ankle, all the way up the back of the legs, up through the glutes, straight up both sides of the spine, up the back of the neck, coming over the top of the head, forehead, into the corner of the eyes. As we exhale, taking that all the way back up over the forehead, over the back of the head, down the neck, down the back, through the glutes, back of the legs, 
outer ankle, outside of the foot to the little toes. So just continuing with that at your own pace, drawing energy up, and either allowing that energy to move back down or even just gently pushing it all the way back down to the toes. It's the longest meridian in the body. So I always find when I work with this meridian band, it almost feels like a full body flush of the meridian network. Unlike some of the shorter meridians, you really can begin to feel the movement of energy sensation from the toes right up to the top of the head and back down. Almost quite a dynamic sort of flushing of the system. And taking your time with the movements Taking your time so that we can appreciate all the sensations all the way up the back of the legs, glutes, back, neck and head, and all the way back down again. Taking note of the difference in the sensations, going to feel very different in the hamstrings area, to the glutes, to the back, and again very different around the head. Maybe just noting for you where it feels strongest and less strong. And just for the final time, drawing up from the toes, outer ankle, all the way up the back of the legs glute, back muscle, straight up the neck, over the head, into the corner of the nose, and back down. Next inhale, just gently walking the hands back. Staying in a seated position for a moment, so our next posture again, the meridian we're going to target again is the urinary bladder, so staying with that same meridian, but we're going to do that with a different physical posture, and maybe I'll talk through, Vanessa will demonstrate, there's a couple of different ways we can get into this, so we're going to lie on our back bend our knees and then maybe as a first stage bring our knees in towards our forehead so we can have our hands on the mat here or we could even support ourselves around the torso the hips there with the hands and if we're comfortable with that we could even extend our legs into what's sometimes called a, a plow As a final stage for those that are more comfortable, which I'll demonstrate when I get into the posture, we can bend our knees and allow those to move down towards the mat. But what this is going to allow us to do, we're obviously going to be targeting our urinary blood meridian running all the way up the back of the neck, over the head, into the corner of the eye, as we did in our last posture. Be interesting to just compare the sensation with the same meridian as we did forward in caterpillar to this one back in plough or snail. So finding our first physical edge, whatever that might be. Relaxing the muscles.
wax and I'll find the posture if it's up a little bit. Whatever we're comfortable with, our knees on our head, legs straight out or even knees bent. We're getting the same benefits. Just gonna be behind or up the head. And just finding stillness. Stillness, we take our attention to the outside of the Little toes. As we inhale, we draw that energy up the outside of the inner ankle, back of the legs, through the glutes, back, neck, over the head into the corner of the arms. And as we exhale all the way back down, head, neck, back, back of the legs, outer ankle, down to the little toes. So just continuing with that in your own time. Draw that energy up and down. As I said at the start, maybe interesting to compare to the sensations in the previous posture. Here we're also going to get a lot more sensation in the upper part of that meridian as it passes through the upper body, the neck, and the back of the head. Whereas in the previous posture, it was focused down in the back of the legs and the glutes. Just finding an expression that's worked for you today. If you want to stay in plow, you're going to get more at the back of the legs. But if you'd like more in the neck and the head, then I mean, the snail posture is probably better for that. Time we inhale and draw energy up. And as we exhale, moving that energy all the way back down the back, back of the legs. As we exhale, just gently rolling out of whatever posture you're in. Just continuing to lie flat on our backs, 
a slightly extended rebound there. So relaxing those arms and legs. Closing the eyes if we're comfortable. If we're not comfortable closing the eyes, then a, a loose focus or gaze at the ceiling. Just generally trying to clear the mind, open the mind up. Taking the attention to the back of the body. Whole of the back of the body. Back of the legs, glutes. Glossal lumbar, the back area, the neck. The head. Just trying to discern what's happening there. Are there sensations? Are they static or are they moving? Maybe there's a high frequency vibration there. Maybe something that feels like an oscillation of sound. Or something warm or cool. Maybe a combination of these in different parts of the body. You find that the soles of the feet are quite cool. Vibration in the back of the back of the legs. Warmth in the in the spine at the back. Sometimes that changes and moves between the different areas. Using parts or all of that full length of the body, meridian band, from the toe right up the back of the head. Inhale, just gently coming up to a seated position. So, still working with the urinary bladder meridian on the outside and the back. This time we're going to target it by extending the right leg forward and bringing, sorry, extending the left leg forward bring the right leg over, sometimes called a half shoelace. And from there, we're just going to gently walk the hands forward, finding that first point of physical resistance, so whether that's you know, the back of the legs or the glute or the back, different for everybody. Relax the muscles. As we relax the muscles, we might find that things open up a little bit, maybe that edge moves out a little bit, maybe the posture opens up. That's the case. If we want to, we can go a little bit deeper, or we can just stay exactly where we are. So again, here, some people might want to use a, a bolster across the middle here, or you might want to support yourself on your elbows. Some people like to support their head on a block. But wherever you are, just finding yourself comfortable, just find some stillness. As 
in that stillness, we're going to take that clear focus now down to the outside of the little toe on the left foot. As we inhale, we're going to draw that up to the outer ankle, all the way up the back of the leg, glute, left side of the spine, up the left side of the neck, head, over the top of the head, finishing in the corner of the left eye. As we exhale, coming all the way back down, left side of the spine, glute, back of the left leg, outside of the left foot, finishing at the left little toe. And just continuing with that at your own pace. Maybe coordinating the breath and the movement of the energy. If you can't feel that movement through the full length of that urinary bladder meridian, then just visualizing the drawing of the line. Just visualize drawing it with your own finger along the line that we've just talked about. Drawing up and moving back down. So again, same meridian. So this would be the third posture in a row that we've targeted this area. So just noting how different it's feeling. feel different because we're flushing it out a little bit more, we're also targeting a slightly different area. Maybe our perceptions changing. As we inhale, just walk the body back up, torso back up. Now we're going to stay largely in this same position. We're going to keep the left leg forward. We're just going to take that right leg back. What we're going to do here, we're going to use a different physical posture. We're going to switch to the kidney meridian. And the way we're going to do that is by taking this right leg back. Bending the knee, taking the right leg back like that. And what this is going to do is it's going to move the attention or the focus to the kidney meridian up through the inside of this leg. So first just finding that physical edge. Again, the position of the knee and the foot is not materially important. It's whatever works for you. The key is that we're getting some kind of sensation up through here. So if you're comfortable with it a bit further in or further back and the foot out, that's fine. Again, we're going to be here for a good four minutes. We want to make sure we're comfortable. So we're starting to find that first edge. You're walking the hands forward a little bit. So again, you can use your block. You can use a bolster across the front here to take some, some of the weight if you prefer. Or you can just walk the hands forward, rest on the elbows. For some of you, you might just prefer to rest the head on the knee. or an area below the knee, wherever you're comfortable. We're not, um, we're not trying to force ourselves into it. Again, it's, it's yin. Our focus here is meridians, it's energetics, so we're not even focusing on the physical, the physical components of the yin practice. 
so more subtle. So we definitely don't want to be straining physically. So once we've found that edge, just relaxing, relaxing the muscles. And just finding some stillness. And with that stillness, we take our attention to the little toe on the left foot. As we inhale, drawing across the sole of the foot to the inner ankle, up the inside back of the left leg to the groin, straight up the middle of the torso, ending at the left clavicle. Exhaling, taking it all the way back down, groin inside of the left leg, inner angle, foot on the side of the little toe. Just continuing with that at your own pace. And if you want to, you can explore with different positions of the head. Or maybe explore with walking the hands into the inside of the leg, outside of the leg. And we talk about finding stillness in this practice quite a lot. As I've said many times, it's not a rigid, stiff stillness, it's stillness that allows us to move with our edge. So we don't want to be fidgeting, but equally there's nothing wrong with adjusting as the posture opens up or we need to back out. Or even if we explore a different position for the torso or the head. Maybe for the last time now, just drawing up from the little toe across the sole, inner ankle, inside the leg, groin, middle of the torso, up to the left clavicle, exhaling all the way back down, middle of the torso, groin, back of the left leg, down the inner ankle, across the sole of the foot, the small little toe. Next inhale, just walking the hands back, bringing the torso up. So we're just going to do repeat that to the other side. So we'll be wanting to have the right leg forward this time. And we'll be starting with that half shoelace we did on the other side. So we're coming back to hamstring that the meridian we're targeting is the urinary bladder on the right foot. So coming up the outside of the right leg, back over the head. So taking that left leg over the extended right, starting to settle in and find our first point of physical resistance, that first edge. Sure, the muscles are relaxed. Easy in this posture in particular to have some tension in the back of the hamstrings. We don't want that. Relaxing the muscles there and in the glutes and the, the back. And then edge, relaxing the muscles. Supporting ourselves as we wish, whether it's with the elbows, bolster, or using a block.
and starting to find that stillness. Stillness in the mind and the body. And with that stillness, taking the attention down to the outside of the little toe on the right foot. As we inhale, drawing up to the outer ankle, all the way up the back of the right leg, right glute, right side of the spine, right side of the neck, over the head, forehead, finishing just in the corner of the right eye. As we exhale, back up over the forehead, head, down the neck, right side of the back, glute, down the back of the right leg, outside of the right ankle, outside of the foot, finishing at the right of the toe. Continue with that in your own time, your own pace. Taking the time with each movement, with each rising and falling. The energy just taking the time to observe the sensations that arise as you move through different parts of the body. Very different in the back of the leg to the glute and the back. Different again in the, as the energy moves through the neck and the head. It's the same energy, the chi or the prana, moving all the way through that meridian. And a very different effect on the different parts of the body as it moves through. So don't be surprised if you get a very different sensation as you do move that energy through this full back of the body meridian band. sure that we're not overdoing the physical expression of the posture and that we're giving ourselves enough stress but not too much that we're distracted from the subtle energetic movements. Let's make sure that we can tune in to the more subtle sensations. Next inhale, walking those hands back, lifting the torso, and as we did on the other side, keeping that right leg out front, we're going to take that left leg back, again position of the knee and the foot, not important, just what works for you in terms of getting some sensation at the inside of this right leg. So we've changed the physical posture slightly, but we're keeping this right leg forward. But we're now switching our attention in terms of meridians from the urinary bladder to the kidney. So coming across the sole of the foot, the inside of the leg here, and up the torso. So starting to walk the hands forward, finding that physical edge. Remembering this side might feel different to the other side. It's always the case with these asymmetrical postures, it's never identical on both sides. Using a bolster or a block if you want to, to support your head or your torso. Maybe just your elbows. 
So settling into the posture now. Starting to find some stillness. Using that stillness we take our attention down to the underside of the little toe on the right foot. As we inhale, just drawing a line with an energy across the sole of the foot, coming to the inner ankle, coming up the inside of the leg, to the groin, up the middle of the torso, and just coming over to the right clavicle, as we exhale, back down from clavicle, middle of the torso down to the groin, inside of the right leg, coming down to the inner ankle, across the sole of the foot, finishing at the underside of the little toe of the right foot. So just continuing with that at your own pace, your own rhythm, that energy up from the inhale and moving it all the way back down as we exhale. Starting to become aware how quite small movements, small physical movements, slightly different postures can promote a very different energetic sensation. So here by quite small adjustments to our posture we can target either of the kidney or the urinary bladder meridians. kidney with a very front of body focus, and the urinary bladder with a much more back of body focus. Might be quite challenging initially, but as our practice continues and our perception improves, it becomes much easier to distinguish between where that energy is flowing. different sensations coming up the inside of the leg to the back of the leg. So here again we want to draw across from the little toe across the sole of the foot to the inner ankle straight up the inside of the leg, groin, middle of the torso, clavicle, and exhaling coming all the way back down the middle of the torso, inside of the leg, inside ankle, across the sole of the foot to the little toe. Next inhale, just walking those hands back, raising the torso, and just coming to a line posture on our back for a well-deserved, slightly extended rebound. Arms and legs relaxed. Comfortable distance from the body. Eyes closed. If not, soft focus on the ceiling. Taking our attention down to the target areas we've been working. Taking quite different routes for these two meridians. 
in the upper body. It's actually front and back, but quite similar in the lower body. Our perception improves distinguishing between those two bands in the lower body becomes much easier. For now, just observing what sensations we have and if possible, what pathways they take. Maybe there's just one pathway there today. Or maybe there are two pathways in the inner leg and the back of the leg. There's a clear line in the sole of the foot up the inside of the leg versus the outside of the foot in the back of the leg. Maybe either or both of those continue up the front and the back of the body. you can feel, just trying to define it in your own words, in your mind, or at the very least just remember what it feels like. Just a couple more breaths here. either rolling over or coming up to a seated position. Our next posture, we're going to physically target the rex abdominis um, and the inside leg. But in terms of the meridian, we're going to be staying with the, the kidney meridian, so little toe, sole of the foot, coming up the inside of the leg. And the way we're going to do that is by coming to lying on our front, supporting ourselves in on the elbows in something like a, a bit of a sphinx. And then we're going to take our right leg, bend the knee and bring it up to the side of the body. Now it doesn't have to be 90 degrees or a particular degree. We just want to get the position of that leg to a point where it's comfortable for us for the next four minutes and also where on the left hand side we can feel a nice stretch in the stomach or the rectus abdominis area. So it's starting to find our, our edge, settling the knee and the foot position. Again we can adjust the position of the torso as we need to. even the position of the head, dropping the head more forward like Vanessa is or straight forward or further back, just working out what's working with that left side of the rectus abdominis or the stomach. here, take our attention, take our stillness, take our attention down to the left little toe and draw up across the sole of the foot, up the inside of the left leg, coming up through the left side of the leg to the groin, straight up the middle of the torso to the left clavicle. As we exhale, taking that energy all the way back down, clavicle, center of the torso, groin, down the inside of the left leg, across the sole of the left foot, to the little toe. 
And just continue with that yourselves, coordinating with your breath if you wish. As Vanessa is demonstrating, if you wish to support yourself more with your arms folded, holding onto opposite elbows, that's fine. Or you can have a hand straight forward. Just keeping the focus on the movement of that energy up and down that left side, and inside of the leg, torso. Again here, there's an opportunity you can experiment a little bit with the position of the head. You could let the head fall to the right hand side. And you might find that that puts a little bit of extra physical stress on the left rectus abdominis. So in the uh, line of the meridian we're working with, moving the head forward or back to the side. You might even get some sensation down there to the left little toe. Drawing it up and down for the last time. Inside leg, groin, torso, clavicle. Exhaling, push that energy down, torso, groin, inside of the leg, sole of the foot, little toe. Straightening out that right leg, simply switching to the other side now, so bending the left leg. Bringing that up to the side, so keeping the right leg extended, left leg bent up. Again, supporting yourself as you're comfortable. Again, here you could find that if this is becoming too much in the arms, you could find that using a, a bolster under the front torso is helpful just to support and carry a little bit of the weight. And just settling in now, looking for that first point of physical resistance, that edge. We found that edge, we're going to relax. We're relaxing the muscles in the stomach, the rectus abdominis and the back. We're just allowing the body to move towards the mat a bit. And we found that edge. Relaxing and settling in. And just finding stillness. Calm, relaxed stillness. Flexible. Take our attention down to the little toe and draw up across the sole of the foot up all the way up the inside of the right leg it's groin coming up the front of the torso in the middle and ending at the clavicle exhaling moving all the way back down clavicle torso groin inside of the right leg inner ankle across the sole of the foot to the underside of the little toe on the right foot. Continuing with that energetic movement. At your own pace. Doesn't work for everybody, but for some people Dropping the head towards the left hand side. They give a slightly different sensation all the way down the inside of that right leg. 
even up into the right hand side of the torso. So try that maybe and then draw the energy up through the meridian and see if there's a change in the movement sensation for you. If there is, just note what it is. Sometimes it's really by just these small explorations at the margin, at the edge, that we find out what really works for us, what really opens up that meridian pathway for us. And that's going to be very different for all of us. It's going to be very different between different practices that we do. Next inhale, just rolling over. The next posture, we're going to use a twist. Uh, so we're going to be moving back to targeting the urinary bladder meridian. So we're back onto the outside, coming up to the outer ankle, the back leg, back of the leg, all the way up the back, even the top of the head. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to lie on our back. We're going to bend the knees, bring the knees up. We'll take the right leg over the left. And if we can, we can either just leave it here. We're going to tuck it behind the left leg. And we're going to allow right leg to come over towards the mat, so take both legs over, right leg on top, so we're starting to find our physical edge, relaxing the muscles around the obliques and glutes, and just relax. Allow the posture to open up a little bit. We can take our elbows or take our arms above the, the head, holding on to the opposite elbows. And then start to find that silence and stillness that we need. the stillness to perceive the more subtle sensations. In that stillness we can take our attention down to the outside of the little toe on the right leg, one on top. As we inhale we draw the energy up. all the way up the back of that right leg up through the glute, the right side of the spine, over the head, finishing in the corner of the eye.
as we exhale, taking that energy all the way back down. Over the head, neck, side of the back. Glutes down the back of the leg. Outer ankle, the edge of the foot. Finishing at the little toe. Maybe we adjust our head. Just continuing with that energetic movement up and down that right side at your own pace. Maybe drawing the energy up as you inhale. And then moving the energy back down as you exhale. All the way from the little toe to the back of the leg, the back, the neck, the head. And all the way back down. Sometimes coordinating this movement with the breath allows us to do two things, keep an eye on whether our breath is getting choppy, in which case we may be a little bit too deep in the posture. But also, just in terms of uh, maintaining a nice slow rhythm of energetic movement. We'll do exactly the same to the other side. So taking our left leg over the right, if you can, just hooking that left foot behind the right calf. If not, just leave it one fold, as it were. Exhale, just allowing that top leg to come over towards the right hand side. Developing that nice twist there in the torso. Starting to find our physical edge, relaxing the muscles around the obliques and the glute. Find that edge. As we find that the relaxation opens up the posture a bit, ready to move out. Allow us to extend our arms over the head if you want to, holding on to the opposite elbows. Maybe we adjust our head turning towards the right hand side. And then we find stillness. Relaxed cellars. One that allows us to move with the edge, in or out. In that stillness, we can take our attention down to the left little toe, the outside edge. As we inhale, we draw the energy up. The outside edge of the foot to the outer ankle, up the back of the leg, glute, left hand side of the back, neck, over the head, finishing in the corner of the left eye. As we exhale, taking that energy all the way back down, over the head, neck, left hand side of the back, left glute down the back of the Left leg, outer ankle, left edge of the foot, 
And if you can get the left little toe. And just continue with that now for the rest of this posture in your own time. Moving the energy up. And back down. Working with these two meridians and addressing any disharmony here is said to help us let go of things that you should be letting go of. Helping us to declutter and simplify life. So maybe have that thought in mind as you flush that meridian band with that energy. As you move that energy up and down. Not only flushing the meridian, but maybe flushing unwanted things or unnecessary things out. Releasing the arms, unwinding the legs. Staying in a lying position, lying on your back, getting ready for Shavasana. So bringing the eyes to a close if they're not already, or maintaining that soft focus on the ceiling. Relaxing the arms and the legs. Relaxing the back, torso, glutes. Relaxing the whole body. As you relax the whole body, just allowing it to sink into the mat. The mat supporting you, the earth supporting the mat, the earth supporting you. Maintaining that inward focus that we've held for the last 85 minutes or so. And taking our attention down to our little toes. From our little toes, coming all the way up the back of our body. Just do a scan all the way up the back of the body. From the heels right up through the calves, back of the thighs, glutes, back, shoulders, neck, back of the head. Coming right over the back of the head to the eyes. Exhaling, scan all the way back down. Just taking note of how the back of the body feels, just noting any sensation there. Maybe the 
there's some general residual energetic sensation there. Or just an overall feeling of relaxation. Refocusing on the little toes again. This time we're just going to draw a scan all the way up the front of the body. And all the way back down. And decide if for you there are different sensations in the front of the body to the back of the body. Again, is it energetic? Maybe it's just relaxed. Maybe there is a pulsation in the front and the back of the body. Perhaps you can discern them separately. Or perhaps not. Perhaps there's just a single pulsation throughout the body. Moving your attention now to your breathing. Deep inhale. And exhale. Bringing some energy back to the body. To an energized but relaxed state. And on your next. Inhale, just rolling over to one side. Keeping the eyes closed if you can. Coming up to a seated posture. Just gently and slowly in your own time. Eyes closed or looking down towards the mat or the floor. One more inhale and exhale, gently blinking the eyes open and raising the head. Namaste. I do hope that you enjoyed this practice. Namaste.